it is such an untapped, large uh, market. There is space for many companies, and it is an area that's going to be classed as its own industry in its own right. It is an area that is unlimited in size. Um, it's an area that will challenge some of the metals within mining because there's so much of it on surface already. It's not a company like Jubilee is not getting into a space that is limited. So our growth is going to be rapid as it is over the next two, three years. Hello, welcome to our viewers on CruxInvestor.com. We're here today with Leon Kurtzer. He's the CEO of Jubilee Metals. We're going to learn a little bit about you, aren't we? Yes, thank you. Do you want to start with a one minute summary? Introduce the company to people who have not heard the yes, story before. Yes, sure. So Jubilee Metals Group, as the name says, we're a company that focuses on the recovery of metals, um, a variety of metals we diversified across various mining jurisdictions. We specifically focus on the recovery and processing of metals at surface. Mm -hmm. We are a highly profitable company um, and you'll see in our results, which are quite soon to be released, uh, the growth phase we're going through. At okay, the fant fantastic. Now, at surface, people use the phrase tailings as well yes. inter interchangeably there. Yes, so, yes. can you explain what that means for you as a business and why you've selected that? Yeah, no, sure. So, you know, at our core, Jubilee is formed from a group and it's, uh, of highly educated uh, technical engineers, uh, developers, uh, process engineers, and we've always questioned the term waste and tailings um, through the history of mining um, various mining companies have discarded material based on either efficiency difficulty to recover mm -hmm. the minerals economic yeah. reasons and these reasons change through the time technology moves on markets move on uh, and as mining over the past hundreds of years have thrown out onto surface millions of tons of waste, mm -hmm. um, we as a company over the last years have zoned in on that particular area mm -hmm. and been questioned, uh, openly questioning what companies regard as waste. Why is it not being recovered? Um, and with our own in-house uh, research centers, we have our own process development centers, we've been developing and deploying solutions to recover those metals. Right, and you specialize in PGM? We do quite a few. Yes, we've, we started off on PGMs. Yep. It was our first uh, foray into the market. Um, we selected it very carefully, the PGMs initially. Why? Well, basically because of the fact that the PGM market is strong. Um, it, PGMs, by its very name, suggests it's a group of metals. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you, you, you're focusing a group of precious metals that um, we knew we had developed uh, a, a market-leading process um, approach to recover those metals, um, and we've done it very profitably. Right. And, okay, tail tailings has been around for a while, but yes. you're, you've got a reputation as being sort of market leaders. You know, it's certainly around Chrome, which you've got a lot of experience yes. in, and previously, well, and, and, and PGMs sure. generally, but your focus today is what? Today, as a company, uh, right now, we've established our foundation to first show how we do it mm. um, in various metal groups. Our big drive now is diversifying and replicating. Right. Replicating what we've shown we can do across uh, mining jurisdictions and across metal groups. Mm. It's really capitalizing on the fact that we've taken that market lead mm -hmm. um, and now running faster. Okay. Um, and that really is our focus. So I do want to move on to all of that, but mm -hmm. first I, do, I want people to understand what tailings oh, is yeah, precisely okay because you say you're taking you've got mounds of earth effectively yes. at the surface there's some value in there mm -hmm. there's also some liabilities in there yes. right and you're extracting precious metal yes. precious, like, precious materials from that yes what happens what happens after that no that's a good question i mean if you just even take a further step back to yeah. that if you look at the history of companies who've claimed to be in the waste processing or tailings processing um, game yeah. there are many failures out there mm -hmm. because there's a very good reason quite often why that material passed through the process mm. and ended up as waste um, and that's why we took the view as Jubilee to go and do our homework first. We spend years in the background understanding why metals are in, in that um, tailings, what went either wrong mm -hmm. through the main process, or is there a particular reason why that mineralogy wasn't suited to the traditional process. So tailings, you're quite right, have been formed. Amongst in that tailings there are environmental liabilities, mm -hmm. um, because you know, as, as time has moved on, there's been a, a newfound focus on tailings, responsible mining, ensuring that what you are laying down as your own waste doesn't end up further 
um, uh, causing damage to the environment or even the surrounding community right. and people. Uh, and what we've done as Jubilee, we've, uh, from the outset, we've deployed very stringent policies. We as a company stand for zero effluent. So mm -hmm. our processes mm -hmm. uh, strive to a zero effluent status. So once we pick up quite often historical tailings that are causing environmental damage, we recover our metal and we then lay down our own tailings back down. We ensure that our tailings are fully contained or fully neutralized to ensure no continued contamination exists. So natural outcome of what we do mm -hmm is rehabilitation okay. um, of the process. Okay, so th those themes are, are, are quite current in yeah. terms of there's a lot of unrest. I think there's a conference down in Melbourne where people were protesting around yes. miners and, what, and the way that they did it. So Absolutely. I, I get that that thematic is important at the moment, but mm -hmm. the other thematic is how do you make money? Oh, absolutely. Right? Um, and so that's why I, I fully agree with you. You can't be a rehabilitation company. Sure. We are a very profitable metals recovery company, but we right. do it in a very strict and responsible manner so that what we leave behind is a rehabilitated site. Absolutely. So let, let's talk about sort of how you go about getting business because, yes. you know, I think improving technology is one thing. You know, yes. you're better at doing it sure. than people have been historically. Sure. So th there's some margin in that, improved margin in that. Mm -hmm. But this business is about winning contracts, isn't yes. it? So well, how do you it's a combination. So right. tell, me, tell us about that. A, a, a very nice. I mean, it's part of our evolution as well. When we started out, our balance sheet couldn't allow us to acquire out these hmm. resources of waste. So you're quite right. Initially, it was about winning a contract, hmm. about going in and proving to the industry that we are better at what we're doing. Yeah. We can do it faster and we can do it more efficiently. Um, and partnering with that company to become that contract entity. So explain that relationship. So you're, you're partnering with a company to remediate to a degree, but also extract value, right? Yes. So typically that partnership would be, they have recognized on their balance sheet a waste liability. Right. They do not have either the technical expertise or financial ability to recognize the potential value that can be extracted. We develop that solution. We partner with that company yeah. uh, where we do it on a earning share basis where we deploy the process, yeah. we operate that process, we make profit from recovering the metals, right. and we share a component of that value or those earnings with the original owner. Which bit are you, are you sharing the profit or are you sharing the, the total uh, recovered, co uh, ret recovered value? Oh, no, so it's the profit component. Right, so you pay for your costs share. and, and then you share the, the share Quite the correct, because okay. in that instance, yeah. that liability remains with the owner. Um, and that's where we were. And you know, the company got to a profitable state, yeah. the strength of our balance sheet has grown, yeah. where today the transaction is starting to change. So tell us about that, because you've obviously had quite a nice transaction recently, yes. right? And so you've morphed into being a little bit more than you were. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah, exactly. So that particular contract you referred to was initially, we were this contract entity hmm. that had a um, very specialized processing facility yep. and we're recovering metal and we are sharing earnings. Just a service provider. Correct. Right? That's metamorphed now where after this transaction, we are the outright owner yeah. of all that material. We are, of course, outright owner of our own facility. Mm -hmm. So we've gone from sort of a contractor type relationship mm -hmm. to a full ownership mm -hmm. uh, entity where we drive our own destiny, how yeah. much we process, at what rate we process, um, how hard do we capitalize that project to up efficiencies. We are now the driver of our own destiny. So, which is great. I think, and that's quite a big change for the company mentally. Yes. So what was, what was that conversation like? When did you first have that thought? Was it just restrictions around what cash you had available to deploy or your ability to borrow cash to sure. do that sort of transaction? It was from the outset, it was right. part of our strategy. We realized and we're realistic that we could leverage of our internal capability to mm -hmm. get into the market. We then would target to get to a position of profitability. Once the balance sheet allowed and we had the support from the shareholder base is to then mm -hmm. migrate into owner and yeah. ownership. It is why this is actually our third transaction of ownership. If you look at just this year alone, in January we acquired outright a facility at that stage which we've branded Windsor, mm -hmm. which is one of South Africa's largest chrome beneficiation facilities. Um, a, a couple of months after that we acquired Sable Zinc from Glencore, 
outright acquisition mm. of that refinery um, and owner of the material adjacent to it. Mm. And then, of course, this transaction, which yeah. we've now also acquired until. So it was a natural progression for our company yeah. um, to move into the space of ownership rather than, as you say, contract or service provider. Right, so there's, so there's a lot, lot going on there, which is great. Mm -hmm. You've got the ability to uh, assess and diligence the right projects so that you're not getting into contracts which aren't economic. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. a, that's a very, very important a, point, right? A, a absolutely critical point because there are many, as I said, failures and tailings where people don't yeah. quite understand the technical component mm. to recovering tailings. Yes, it's a low risk business compared to mining because sure. you can see the material, yeah. you can sample it, um, you have no mining risk component. So you don't have that very large cost overhang of getting the material to surface. Mm. But it does require technical knowledge on how to extract that metal out of that waste. Right, okay. So, you, so you're painting a picture here where you've, you've built up a kind of knowledge or skill set. You're primarily focused in South Africa, which has got a checkered history as yes. far as investors are concerned. Yes, of course. And we maybe talk about that in, in mm -hmm. a minute. I know you're in Zambia now and you think there's great potential there too, but how do you go about identifying and competing yes. to acquire? projects at the moment, the right project, the economic oh, projects, because yeah, they're, 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 they're going to be more expensive by nature, I guess, are they? Yes, they are. I mean, uh, what we do, it's a two-pronged attack. We have a group of individuals that uh, look at the mining space, look at the mining jurisdictions, and we grade them mm -hmm. on opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's two ways of attacking this. On the one side, initially, we as Jubilee provided our expertise two large mining companies yeah. where we consulted on efficiency improvements yeah. uh, to assist in upgrading their processes. So Jubilee's brand has traveled. We're now at a position where we can approach these large entities or large mining conglomerates and we're now providing them a service to look at their current waste and create a waste portfolio for yeah. them. In that waste portfolio, we then apply our knowledge to grade the opportunities to either execute in partnership or acquire um, those resources. So you, you mentioned the presentation, which I do encourage investors to read. It's, it's, quite, it's quite well laid out. Thank and you. It does talk about the important components here. You partner with some global names. Yes. So there's still a kind of servicing component to your revenue stream. Yes. And you're also trying to take charge of some of the revenue. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, which is, which is great. Quite so great. tell us about what are you doing with some of these names? I mean, I know like Mitsubishi and North and Long and etc. Yes. Yeah, so, so what we do is we we approach these very large uh, mining global um, companies, um, and what we provide for mm. them is to develop their waste into a portfolio. Mm. Once you've got that portfolio, that opportunity exists for Jubilee to come in and fund into operation, that right. entity. So it's it's not a service, but yeah. it's got a component of service quite accurately stated, but it's a joint venture type agreement okay. where the prize is so large in these mining global entities that by joint venturing with that entity, you are getting an exclusive entry into that waste portfolio yeah. and you're creating a new entity with longevity of material. Yeah. So we, a tailings project might have a defined 10 to 15 year life, you're now creating longevity for the but business. It, it has some value, definitely for you, but what's it sitting on the balance sheet for these big companies? It as? changes a liability into an earnings generative entity. It's, but it's currently sitting as a liability Very for much them so. because yes. it's, a, it's a cost they need to yes. absorb. It's a cost, it's a safety, environmental um, hazard. It's got a, a lot of Legal. connotations to it. Legal, Legal. Legal. etc. Um, very yeah. much so. And because it is so important, uh, people often ask me, how do we, how do we protect our position? Yeah. What are the competitors out there? Yeah. The key component is that it might sound easy to get into, into this industry, but your barrier to entry to, be, to get to a position where you can approach a global mining house is you have to have a track record. Mm -hmm. You have to show that your track record of implementation has been responsible environmentally for people, mm. that you've, you've pursued your zero effluent policy as an active policy, not just something to mention, um, and that your efficiency track record is high. And to get that track record doesn't come overnight. So that really is that in industry leading position you can take, yeah. because we know that we can host people in our, in, into our development centers. We can take the large mining companies, we're even taking governments into our facilities in South Africa to come and view what have we built, how we operate, mm. how do we partner with the owner mm. of, of, that, of, of that material. And that really is how we capitalize on that position. And do you think with relationships like that, they've got their own set of worries, 
you see it as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. You're coming from the saying, well, actually, this could be revenue for you. Yes. So who manages those negotiations? Because I guess they don't really know what they're walking into, or is it a well-trodden path for them to? No, it's not a well-trodden path. So the real approach is, is, is to really take that decision headache away. Okay. So that, that you're offering them a zero risk entry. Is that what they're more concerned about that? Because these are big companies. Yeah, they've totally. got big balance sheets, exactly. lots of cash. To them, the cash is not so important as what you're going to do for them. Well, the world is changing. You know, we're going through a tough period in mining. Yeah. Um, if you look at the performance of certain of the metals, a lot of companies are looking, how do I drive extra efficiency out of all the effort I've put in to bring material to surface? Yeah. And a key component is to look at what am I throwing away? Mm -hmm. um, and you're quite right. It is less so for them about the capital saving, but far more so that if they do choose a partner, that they know it's a partner that's not going to create a headache but actually address headaches. Yeah. Um, it's also a partner that has a track record of not doing a transaction to keep it, the transaction on the balance sheet, mm. but actually to implement that transaction. We don't hold onto balance sheet a lot of assets. We, each asset we have acquired is actively being developed and implemented. Yeah. And that's the track record and, and the part that they look for. Okay, that's, that's fascinating to me. Um, I do want to talk about growth. Yeah. Everyone's just looking growth, okay? Yeah. You've had a good year. Share price has you know, had a couple of bumps up, yes. which is nice, um, on some quite good news. You're starting to get a sense of what you are and what you want to be. Um, part of that growth story is about diversification, Yes. okay? Now, you've mm -hmm. got lots of moving parts here. Yeah. You're, we you're talking do. about geographic diversification. You're doing that with Zambia. So yes. um, Maybe now's the time to talk about the geographic component. Sure. So you're primarily in South Africa at the moment, moved into Zambia. What do you Correct. think the opportunity there is? Zambia is tremendous. I mean, Zambia is another large mining dominated economy, mm -hmm. uh, large mining jurisdiction, um, years of copper mining, creating yeah. copper waste, creating zinc, where we are in at the moment, um, waste. Um, untapped opportunity to look at what waste is in fact an opportunity uh, in that country. Tremendous opportunity for us. But it's, 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 it's also a country which has again, you know, had, its, had its issues. Yes, in sure. terms of you know, mining law, mm -hmm. how was it like operating there? It's, I mean, we, we are close. That's the one big benefit. You know, it's only a two hour flight. It's yeah. not a 14 hour flight, yeah. um, which is the big benefit. And we, from day one, and when we went into Zambia, we established a strong Zambian presence. We use that presence to engage at all levels within Zambia, from government to community to business, mm. to ensure that we really went into Zambia with open eyes. Um, the one thing about Zambia is you're dealing with a government and uh, governmental structures that understands the importance of mining and the need of foreign investment to drive that mining. So that's a key component that protects and drives your investment in Zambia. I understand they think that, but well, what's the reality of doing business there? Is it problematic or do you think that you've it's got... It's got its challenges. Right. Uh, as, uh, one of the challenges you have in Zambia is underinvestment in infrastructure. Right. So you have okay. the challenge of power, you have the challenge of road um, access, and it's a component that drove our decision. Mm. Um, when we looked at the opportunity in Zambia, we were offered this tremendous um, valuable vanadium, lead and zinc um, uh, resource. Mm. And we had a decision to be made in, 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 in Jubilee. Um, and Colin, our chairman, and ourselves debated around are we going to build a greenfield site within mm. that challenge, or we rather capitalize on an opportunity, and that is buy an existing refinery which has its power resolved, it's got its infrastructure resolved. Mm. Um, and in that infrastructure, then configure a bespoke refinery for our resource. So it very much drove the influence to why did we acquire an existing refinery in Zambia mm -hmm. rather than build it from, from, from scratch. Okay, and do you, do you think any of the value that the company, company's currently seeing is being attributed to Zambia or is that to come? Oh, I'm convinced it's to come. Um, okay. The sheer magnitude of the opportunity is lost right. uh, at this stage. And we also have been conservative in educating the market on the sheer magnitude of what Zambia offers us. Here's an example in Zambia mm. where a single resource mm. that we are going to be processing in a refinery, which we are capitalizing within six months 
unheard okay. of to bring a project yeah. on stream so quickly. And for every ton that comes into that refinery, it carries three revenue generating metals. Um, mm. It's got lead, zinc and vanadium. Right. So okay. we extract in one process and then we refine in three different processes. So it's a naturally high margin project. So how does that work in the t in tailings business? Because obviously some of those commodities are more economic than others at certain times. Oh, vanadium, absolutely. rough ride with vanadium, yeah. up down, you know. Um, zinc's had its challenges in the last year as well. So this, I guess, is part of the diversification of risk that you're, oh, you're taking. You're, you're across multiple absolutely. metals, I get that. But how do you manage those economics as part of your ongoing business? Or is it just a blended approach to managing uh, costs? Well, it's a blended approach, but it's a very much um, a decisive decision-making mm. process to look at, first of all, which metals you want to be exposed to. Mm. Um, so it's not just a free-for-all diversification. Sure. Um, it's driven by which are the metals that we believe um, you want to be in, mm -hmm. first of all, driven by market fundamentals, and secondly, then diversifying across those chosen metals across jurisdictions. Right. Um, so we did not happen to, to stumble across the zinc because it happened to be there. Yeah. It was a decisive decision taken that with a Z, Link and Vanadium combination, you have three metals playing into the energy space. Um, of those three, one of them are going to be the winner, and we sure as well want to be in one of those sectors. Right. Um, and here's an opportunity where all three are in demand. You're quite right, Vanadium is seen as ups and downs. Yeah. But in our particular case, Vanadium is a byproduct of our process. It's not the major or, ma or focus of and the And do you guys project. manage that selling yourself, or are you selling directly into the rebar market, or are you going via Brokers. Oh, it's all very much dependent. Uh, you know, on all, each metal group. We've just travelled China extensively, yeah. uh, where we negotiated offtake for some of our metals directly with the end users. Okay. Um, in vanadium specifically, we we, we are selling it through a, a trading um, company. Yeah. Um, and each metal is driven by its own unique fundamentals. Okay. And I was just wondering what the skills were in house, yeah. etc. But there's no trouble getting it into market. It's a yeah. No, no, no. Exactly. Are you doing it economically yet? And is there more to come? Yeah, exactly. So if you look at our financials, which is really the proof of the pudding, yeah. um, is um, if you look at just our half year results, we released um, you know, our, our, our results for in the June 2019, mm -hmm. which is the last uh, sort of six month update. Mm -hmm. We already had operational earnings of nearly five and a half million pounds yep. um, coming in. And that's before we've commissioned in the, in the following six months, we brought yet another project online. Um, yep. So you can look, you can expect that our financial results for this past six months will take yet another growth step um, because we've brought on a very significant further project on stream. Yeah, it was, it comes, touches the point we made earlier, which is it's great being technolog technologically ahead of the crowd, your peers, yes. et cetera, and having that track record, but you have to do deals oh, absolutely. and the right deals yes and that's what that's what you were saying we can expect to see more of oh absolutely if you look at our project pipeline just this year alone you know we've last year we were proud to have two projects uh, we now have five mm -hmm. um, and we seem to expand that into six projects um, and 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 you get to a position where instead of us chasing the deal mm. the deals are coming more and more towards Jubilee because the brand has been traveled. Yeah. The manner in which we've executed our projects, the manner we've partnered with joint venture partners yeah. is drawing opportunity and presenting it to us as well. So right. we would have a pull and a push. Okay, and just, just finish off on this uh, jurisdictional uh, component because you do talk about potential or certainly your broker talks about potential for global expansion taking this technology further afield. Because yes. right now it's, uh, it's Southern Africa, Correct. Indian, Zambia and South Africa. Correct, yes. Are there plans to do this, or are you talking about potential licensing of your technology elsewhere? Sure. What's, so, the, what's the opportunity there? Also, I suppose the first answer is no, we're definitely not looking at licensing technology. Okay. We're not really developing technology, but solutions. Yep. Um, so yes, we are. We are it's a careful decision, mm -hmm. because um, we, you know, we're in a jurisdiction of South Africa, we're in a jurisdiction, a uh, stone throw away into Zambia, yeah. we have Namibia, we have Botswana. Um, there are so many mining jurisdictions in a very close proximity from where yeah. we are. But at the same time, in our, engage in our engagements with these large global companies, we are being drawn into Chile. We are being drawn into Australia okay. Okay. because the, the process travels um, and the knowledge travels. Um, so there's a natural next diversification. But, but it falls directly into that kind of service provision revenue stream that I've 
talked about earlier, rather than owning. It's a bit of a Southern combination. It's a bit of a combination. Okay. So in Chile, very much so. It's large. It's dominated by the large global entities in sure. Chile. So we are being drawn into that joint venture type agreements. Mm. Australia is a different animal where it's not dominated mm. um, and there are very m quite a few bespoke type solutions mm. which is either owner driven or joint ventures. So both options are being evaluated in Australia but we're looking very carefully at that um, because you can diversify and spread yourself very thinly very quickly mm -hmm. and miss the opportunity in your front doorstep um, where True. we operate. True and again just on the finish off on growth, the growth is going to come from where? doing bigger and bigger deals or have you got other plans? Oh, yeah. So it's driven by balance sheet. I think bigger deals is, is the future for us right. as well. Um, we've shown we can do deals at $2 million, $5 million. This year alone, we've done deals uh, you know, in the order of $40 million this year alone um, for, for Jubilee. Um, so it's a natural progression as we're doing um, larger deals because the amount of detailed design development work we do, whether it's yeah. a $5 million project or a $50 million project, yeah. It is the same. It's throughput. Um, very much so. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, I might w just talk about the numbers br briefly because I know you are rushing around the city of London at the moment, which is telling this story. But um, just looking at the revenue and earnings growth, yeah. how, how, how do you affect margin going forward? Have you kind of peaked in terms of efficiency? Yes. Yeah. And then it's just, well, let's get some scale in here now. Do you think you've, you've, you've cracked it? Well, I suppose the, the example of the answer is no, we haven't fully cracked it. Right. Um, so the, we're expecting and we're constantly driving our margin right. and our growth. And we do that very simply. In a classic example, if you yeah. look at what we've done at Telecom, where, uh, within the chrome industry, where within the chrome industry there was a, a, a natural process decision where a chrome at a particular fraction mm. was discarded into waste. Yeah. And that's the norm across the world yeah. um, because of its physical property. Yeah. It's a question our engineers had been grappling with for the last three years is, but why? And Jubilee deployed the first ultra-fine chrome recovery plant exceptionally successfully at Dilakong, where suddenly mm -hmm. of roughly about 40% of the waste being created mm. by tailings companies mm. are this ultra-fine chrome particles. Yeah. And we have deployed the first solution into Dilakong to take the efficiency of Chrome up to yet another level. That's grown our margin. It's made Jubilee fit for a current downturn in Chrome prices. Yet Jubilee is fit within that market because our efficiencies have stepped up to yet another level. Um, right. And that's how we grow margin. How we grow volume mm -hmm. is we're now deploying that solution back into the industry. Um, so we're deploying it back into our own facilities yeah. and we're deploying it into the larger global mining companies. Right. Do you think the market, and by market I mean retail market, family office, high net worth, do you think they understand your business? Do they understand what tailings involves? Do they, uh, do they, do they see a problem with it? Is it limited yeah. in a way for them? I suppose there's, there's two answers around that is um, initially it might sound complicated. Um, mm. But if you break it down to its pure basics, all it is, is we are a metals company, whether you call us mining or processing, mm. we are a metals company that deploy process solutions onto material at surface, which we can test to death because it's on surface. Yes. We you know deploy where it, is. it. Exactly. We deploy <laughs> yeah. it and we make a very strong margin on that. Um, the part that is, is lost within that is the magnitude of that okay. um, area. I think, and I've said this at, at the Indaba down in Cape Town in South Africa where there's international mining in Indaba, that as the years are progressing, the, 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 the tailings processing um, component of mining is, is going to become an industry in its own right. It will educate to the market the macroeconomics of the sheer magnitude of this area. It is an area that is unlimited in size. Um, it's an area that will challenge some of the metals within mining because there's so much of it on surface already. And it's that part, I think, that slowly the market is grappling with to understand the size yeah. of it. It's not a company like Jubilee is not getting into a space that is limited. So our growth is going to be rapid as it is over the next two, three years, but then hit, hit, mm. its, you know, hit, hit the ceiling. It is such an untapped, large um, market, there is space for many companies, and it is an area that's going to be 
class as its own industry in its own right. Fantastic. And have you got ambitions to move into processing of tailings for other commodities? Or do you just know what you know and you're going to stick to your knitting? Yeah, so we, what we do in the background is, is our processes are transportable. Um, the process we develop for classifying and recovering that fine chrome particle is directly transferred into our Zambian operation to mm -hmm. classify and recover very fine copper particles. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of the process that's completely transportable. And we pre-select those metals where our entry, we can leverage what we know. We can okay. leverage what we've developed to ensure that when we enter that space, we do that speed. Um, and that's how we've pre-selected which metals we pursue. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to ask you to give me three reasons why investors who are not already in I think people who are invested in you are very passionate about you. You can see that. For people who are not yet invested in you, what are the three reasons they well, should? Well, I suppose the first reason will be look at our performance. Look at our performance over the last three years. If you just look at our revenue, earnings growth, and our physical production growth. Mm. Step one, because mm. it means that we are a profitable company. Yep. Um, the second reason would be that that's just the beginning. What we now are going to deliver uh, is, is another multiple on what we've achieved today, because it's just the foundation. And the third reason is it's, it's a sustainable growth um, that we are pursuing, and that would be the three reasons. Leon, great introduction, appreciate that. Stay in touch, we'll Will speak do. soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed that. And, and if you did, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also catch us on our website, cruxinvestor.com and Cruxcast, our podcast series. Plus most days you can catch us on LinkedIn and Twitter. We'd love getting your feedback, so please keep that coming and we'll speak to you again soon.